plasma arc welding is an arc welding process similar to gas tungsten arc welding. The electric arc is formed between an electrode and the workpiece. The key difference from GTAW is that in pore, by positioning the electrode within the body of the torch, the plasma arc can be separated from the shielding gas envelope. The plasma is then forced through a fine bore copper nozzle which constricts the arc and the plasma exits the orifice at high velocities and a temperature approaching 28,000 degrees Celsius or higher. Arc plasma is the temporary state of a gas. The gas gets ionized after passage of electric current through it and it becomes a conductor of electricity. In ionized state atoms break into electrons and cations and the system contains a mixture of ions, electrons and highly excited atoms. The degree of ionization may be between 1% and greater than 100% I. E, double and triple degrees of ionization. Such states exist as more electrons are pulled from their orbits. The energy of the plasma jet and thus the temperature is dependent upon the electrical power employed to create arc plasma. A typical value of temperature obtained in a plasma jet torch may be of the order of 28,000 degrees Celsius against about 5,500 degrees Celsius in ordinary electric welding arc. Actually all welding arcs are plasmas but the one in plasma arc welding is a constricted arc plasma concept. Plasma arc welding is an arc welding process wherein coalescence is produced by the heat obtained from a constricted arc set up between a tungsten alloy tungsten electrode and the water cool nozzle or between a tungsten alloy tungsten electrode and the job. The process employs two inert gases, one forms the arc plasma and the second shields the arc plasma. Filler metal may or may not be added. History the plasma arc welding and cutting process was invented by Robert M. Gage in 1953 and patented in 1957. The process was unique in that it could achieve precision cutting and welding on both thin and thick metals. It was also capable of spray coating hardening metals onto other metals. One example was the spray coating of the turbine blades of the moon-bound Saturn rocket. Principle of operation. Plasma arc welding is a constricted arc process. The arc is constricted with the help of a water-cooled small diameter nozzle which squeezes the arc, increases its pressure, temperature and heat intensely and thus improves arc stability, arc shape and heat transfer characteristics. Plasma arc welding processes can be divided into two basic types of non-transferred arc process. The arc is formed between the electrode and and the water-cooled constricting nozzle. Arc plasma comes out of the nozzle as a flame. The arc is independent of the workpiece and the workpiece does not form a part of the electrical circuit. Just like an arc flame, it can be moved from one place to another and can be better controlled. The non-transferred plasma arc possesses comparatively less energy density as compared to a transferred arc plasma and it is employed for welding, and in applications involving ceramics or metal plating. High-density metal coatings can be produced by this process. A non-transferred arc is initiated by using a high-frequency unit in the circuit. Transferred arc process. The arc is formed between the electrode and the workpiece. In other words, arc is transferred from the electrode to the workpiece. A transferred arc possesses high energy density and plasma jet velocity. For this reason it is employed to cut and melt metals. Besides carbon steels this process can cut stainless steel and non-ferrous metals where an oxyacetylene torch does not succeed. Transfer dark can also be used for welding at high arc travel speeds. For initiating a transfer dark, a current limiting resistor is put in the circuit, which permits a flow of about 50 amps between the nozzle and electrode 
and a pilot arc is established between the electrode and the nozzle. As the pilot arc touches the job main current starts flowing between electrode and job, thus igniting the transferred arc. The pilot arc initiating unit gets disconnected and pilot arc extinguishes as soon as the arc between the electrode and the job is started. The temperature of a constricted plasma arc may be of the order of 8025000C. Equipment The equipment needed in plasma arc welding along with the functions are as follows Power supply A direct current power source having drooping characteristics An open circuit voltage of 70 volts or above is suitable for plasma arc welding Rectifiers are generally preferred over DC generators Working with helium as an inert gas needs open circuit voltage above 70 volts. This higher voltage can be obtained by a series operation of two power sources, or the arc can be initiated with argon at normal open circuit voltage, and then helium can be switched on. Typical welding parameters for plasma arc welding are as follows, current 50 to 350 amps, voltage 27 to 31 volts, gas flow rates 2 to 40 liters per minute. Direct current electrode negative is normally employed for plasma arc welding except for the welding of aluminum in which case as water cool. Electrode is preferable for reverse polarity welding, i.e. direct current electrode positive. High frequency generator and current limiting resistors. A high frequency generator and current limiting resistors are used for arc ignition. The arc starting system may be separate or built into the system. Plasma torch it is either transferred arc or non-transferred arc typed. It is hand operated or mechanized. At present, almost all applications require an automated system. The torch is water-cooled to increase the life of the nozzle and the electrode. The size and the type of nozzle tip are selected depending upon the metal to be welded, weld shapes and desired penetration depth. Shielding gases. Two inert gases or gas mixtures are employed. The orifice gas at lower pressure and flow rate forms the plasma arc. The pressure of the orifice gas is intentionally kept low to avoid weld metal turbulence, but this low pressure is not able to provide proper shielding of the weld pool. To have suitable shielding protection same or another inert gas is sent through the outer shielding ring of the torch at comparatively higher flow rates. Most of the materials can be welded with argon, helium, argon plus hydrogen and argon plus helium, as inert gases or gas mixtures. Argon is very commonly used. Helium is preferred where a broad heat input pattern and flatter cover pass is desired without keyhole mode. Well, a mixture of argon and hydrogen supplies heat energy higher than when only argon is used and thus permits keyhole mode welds in nickel-based alloys, copper-based alloys and stainless steels. For cutting purposes a mixture of argon and hydrogen of that of nitrogen may be used. Hydrogen, because of its dissociation into atomic form and thereafter recombination generates temperatures above those attained by using argon or helium alone. In addition hydrogen provides a reducing atmosphere which helps in preventing oxidation of the weld in its vicinity. Voltage control. Voltage control is required in contour welding. In normal keyhole welding a variation in arc length up to 1.5 mm does not affect weld bead penetration or bead shape to any significant extent and, thus a voltage control is not considered essential. Current and gas decay control. It is necessary to close the keyhole properly while terminating the weld in the structure. Fixture it is required to avoid atmospheric contamination of the molten metal under bead. Process description. Technique of workpiece cleaning and filler metal addition is similar to that in TIG welding. Filler metal is added at the leading edge of the weld pool. Filler metal is not required in making root pass weld. 
type of joints. For welding workpiece up to 25 mm thick joints like square butt, JV are employed. Plasma welding is used to make both keyhole and non-keyhole types of welds. Making a non-keyhole weld, the process can make non-keyhole welds on workpieces having thickness 2.4 mm and under. Making a keyhole welds, an outstanding characteristics of plasma arc welding, owing to exceptional penetrating power of plasma jet, is its ability to produce keyhole welds in workpiece having thickness from 2.5 mm to 25 mm. A keyhole effect is achieved through right selection of current, nozzle orifice diameter and travel speed, which create a forceful plasma jet to penetrate completely through the workpiece. Plasma jet in no case should expel the molten metal from the joint. The major advantages of keyhole technique are the ability to penetrate rapidly through relatively thick root sections and to produce a uniform under speed without mechanical backing. Also, the ratio of the depth of penetration to the width of the weld is much higher, resulting narrow a weld and heat affected zone. As the weld progresses based metal ahead the keyhole melts, flow around the same solidifies and forms the weld B. Keyholing aids deep penetration at faster speeds and produces high quality B. While welding thicker pieces, inlaying others than root run, and using filler metal, the force of plasma jet is reduced by suitably controlling the amount of orifice gas. Plasma arc welding is an advancement over the GTAW process. This process uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode and an arc constricted through a fine bore copper nozzle. Pull can be used to join all metals that are weldable with GTAW. Difficult to weld in metals by pour include bronze, cast iron, lead and magnesium. Several basic pour process variations are possible by varying the current plasma gas flow rate and the orifice diameter, including microplasma, melt-in mode, keyhole mode. Plasma arc welding has a greater energy concentration as compared to GTAW. A deep, narrow penetration is achievable with a maximum depth of 12 to 18 mm depending on the material. Great arc stability allows a much longer arc length and much greater tolerance to arc length changes. Pour requires relatively expensive and complex equipment as compared to GTAW. Proper torch maintenance is critical. Critical. Welding procedures tend to be more complex than less tolerant to variations in fit-up, etc. Operator skill required is slightly greater than for GTAW. Orifice replacement is necessary. Process variables. Gases at least two separate flows of gas are used in pour. Plasma gas flows through the orifice and becomes ionized. Shielding gas flows through the outer nozzle and shields the molten weld from the atmosphere. Back purge and trailing gas are required for certain materials and applications. Dot. These gases can all be same, or of differing composition. Key process variables current type and polarity. DCEN from a CC source is standard. AC square wave is common on aluminum and magnesium. Welding current and pulsing current can vary from 0.5 A to 1200 A. Current can be constant pulsed at frequencies up to 20 kHz. Gas flow rate. Other plasma arc processes, depending upon the design of the torch, electrode design, gas type and velocities, and the current levels. Several variations of the plasma process are achievable, including plasma arc cutting, plasma arc gouging, plasma arc surfacing, plasma arc spraying. 
plasma are cutting. When used for cutting, the plasma gas flow is increased so that the deeply penetrating plasma jet cuts through the material and molten material is removed as cutting. Dross pack differs from oxyfuel cutting in that the plasma process operates by using the arc to melt the metal whereas in the oxyfuel process, the oxygen oxidizes the metal and the heat from the exothermic reaction melts the metal. Unlike oxyfuel cutting, the pack process can be applied to cutting metals which form refractory oxides such as stainless steel, cast iron, aluminum, and other non-ferrous alloys. Since pack was introduced by Praxairing at the American Welding Society show in 1954, many process refinements, gas developments, and equipment improvements have occurred.